Welcome to Oh Hell No with Nicole. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today we have Saeed Renard. He is a producer, vocal arranger, vocal coach, and most recently a contestant on The Four. Welcome, Saeed. Thank you for having me, Nicole. Yes, I'm very excited to talk to you today. The first thing that I want to ask you is, do you know what your name, Saeed, means? I believe it means happy. Yes. It yes, does. I, I mean, it sums me up a little something. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I'm a happy guy. Yeah, I love that name. Was it, did your mom or whoever named you, did they name it, name you Saeed for any particular reason? All I know is that my mother's cousin, Trudy, named me. Okay. She gave her the name. She was like, you should name him Saeed. And she said, okay, I like it. Yes. I looked it up. It's Arabic. It's, um... It means fortunate, blissful, lucky. So, yeah. That works. Yeah. I accept all of that. So, I read a little bit about you, and I read that you um, were born in Brooklyn. Did you grow up in Brooklyn? I grew up in Brooklyn. I lived there until I was like nine. Then my mother moved to Texas with my grandmother, and we chilled there for like off and on for like four years. Mm-hmm. And then we came back to New York. Okay. And then you are one of 21 children. Yes. Papa was a rolling stone. Yes. <laughs> so what is that like with all of those brothers and sisters? How do you find your individuality being amongst so many, you know, siblings? I mean, the good thing about it is that we all didn't live together. I said probably would have been more hectic than it already is. Yeah. But um, the fact that, you know, I got to see them. I had a personal relationship with the majority of them. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm the favorite of of them all. So they love me. Where do you fall? (laughs) Where do you fall in the 21? Well, I'm like probably the 16th or 15th. Oh, wow. That is crazy. You know, my, my grandfather had like this many kids. Maybe not 21, but maybe like, I don't know, something in the teens, like 12, 13, 14, something like that. So my mom has that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole, it's, a, it's an epidemic. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I know a whole bunch of people with a lot of kids. It's yeah, crazy. but it's and nice. My brothers and sisters, like like one brother has 14 kids and oh my, my other brother has six kids and my sister got eight kids. Oh like, no. Over 30 something <laughs> nieces and nephews. What do you do when holidays come or, or birthdays and stuff? You do like a pick out of the hat or something? <laughs> I'm like, listen, it's a collection of love. That's all I got for you. That's right. <laughs> I'll cook for you or something, but that's about it. Oh my gosh, that's insane. But it must be really fun, like when you guys all get together, you know? When we get together, it's definitely a show because we like to laugh. So, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I'm half West Indian. My father's from Trinidad. So, oh, all the right. Jokes Trinidad. Is <laughs> yes, yes. I love Trinidad. You know, today is um, Carnival Tuesday. So, yes. you know. So, at age nine, you started writing music. How did that manifest? Well, I, I was a weird kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would like, if the cartoon didn't have any singing in it, I didn't pay attention to it. Really? So then I, I think this girl I used to be in love with, her name was uh, Atisha or something like that. Mm-hmm. No, it was L- Latasha. And she, like, for some reason, I just thought she was Jewish because she had shut tip across all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, <laughs> I was six years old. <laughs> so I, I used to be in love with her. And then I think I dated her for like maybe a month. And then she dumped me for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And then that just kind of made me start writing a song about I love you. It was the dumbest song ever, but <laughs> oh that's God. all it was. I love you. So did it, was it like poetry or were you actually like singing this? I was actually singing it. I had melody and everything. It was really strange. Oh my goodness. No, that's amazing. Are you kidding me? So do any of your other siblings have this same gift that you have? Some of them can hold a note. Mm -hmm. Like my immediate, they can hold a note because they had no choice because they was in a choir or whether they wanted to be or not. Mm -hmm. 
And then, like, the other ones, they some of them could hold a note, too. But they're not, like, singers. They're not, that's, that's not something they want to do. <laughs> right. And they don't have any, like, interest in music, like, doing something other than singing, but, you know, with music. Nope, I think I'm the only one. Wow, <laughs> that is amazing. When you finished high school, what did you decide that you wanted to do with your life? I knew I wanted to do music, so I was like, I don't need to go to college. I know what I want. Okay. My mother was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I know what I want. So I just started hustling. I would go from, I was like, okay, I need a job. So my first job was at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And I would go to work at McDonald's and then drive, take a train all the way to Jersey mm-hmm. to do music. And I would stay in Jersey for like at least two days. And I got four songs. Wow. And then come back sleep go back to work like the way i schedule the way my schedule was i was able to do a lot so i would just go back and forth from jersey to brooklyn then from brooklyn back to work from work go back home then sometimes i would go from brooklyn to long island to go work with another producer like i always like i never worked in brooklyn until like later so when you were working with these producers you were actually um pursuing singing or were you doing other things well at one point, I was in a group. Mm-hmm. So we would do songs, and I would write all the songs and vocal arrange everything and then teach everybody any part. And then we'll go and record it, and then, you know, that then we have our song. And then eventually, the group kind of broke up because one of the, <laughs> the group members, we was about to get signed to Universal, and one of the group members, uh, Cousin, who this is a big guy, I don't want to mention him, but he, he's big, mm-hmm. and he convinced him that he was going to sign him. Mm. And he didn't sign them. But he convinced them that he wasn't going to sign them, so he left the group. And it kind of messed up the whole situation. Wow. So how did the opportunity come to you to become a songwriter? Well, I think it came natural because I was like, I started writing. After I finished writing for the group, I tried to do my own Mm -hmm. stuff. And then I was like, I was going to do a gospel album because everybody just assumed that I wanted to do a gospel album. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, fine. I'll write a gospel album. So I did that. And then I was like, okay, but on the side, I'm still going to be writing my R&B stuff for, you know, other artists. So that's what I started doing. And then eventually people started hearing me on the R&B songs like, yo, why he ain't taking this song for himself? You know? Right. So it it became a conversation. I was like, okay, the gospel stuff, I love it. That's where I come from. Mm -hmm. But that's not who I am completely. And you know what I mean? So and for me, I felt like every producer I worked with was trying to make me Fred Hammond or something. And I'm a Fred Hammond, you know, like junkie. Like that's my guy. Like I don't like other people because they try and sound like him. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So I can't join the bandwagon. (laughs) Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? So Yeah. I think that that kind of like made me say, you know, maybe I should really pursue the R&B side. So when you say you were writing songs um, for other people, so how does that work? Do you just say, does someone send you a song and then send you the music and then you build a song around it? Or do you just write a whole bunch of songs and send them out to people and see who bites? Like, how does that work? It's a mixture of both. Sometimes, majority of the times, I usually get it. I'm working with a producer. Mm -hmm. So he like, hey, I heard such and such is looking for a song. I came up with this track, see what you can do. And I go to the studio, I do a couple of melodies, and me and my writing partner will probably write out something and come up with something like, if it's quick, we know we got to hit. Usually it takes like 30, 15, 30, maybe 40 minutes to write the song. Wow, that is so, I'm t- this like intrigues me because the fact that you can just sit down, listen to music and then just come up with the words that we will be singing and clinging on to because I love music just like everybody else, you know, but yeah. it just, whenever I listen to music and the melodies and everything, I'm just like, oh my God, it's just so fascinating to me how you guys do this and how you, you know, God gave you guys this gift because it, it's yeah. definitely, you know, God-given talent. You won a Grammy last year. Congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> As a songwriter on Layla yeah. Hathaway Live, which was awarded Best R&B Album. What was that moment like for you when you received that call? When I received the... Because I think we all were sitting down, like, waiting. Like, 
for the Nepal because I didn't go to the awards. I went prior the year before. Mm-hmm. I was nominated for Dorinda Clark Hole, mm-hmm. so I went. I went that year, but this year I stayed home because I was like, "You went to one. You you been to them all. You're good." So I was like, "I think she's gonna win." Mm-hmm. I just kept saying, "I think she's gonna win," and she won. I was sitting home, and then I started seeing a whole bunch of congratulations texts, and then I saw her post something. Then I knew it was real. Wow. <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Like, like, that was just like a full circle moment for me. Because, you know, it's Layla Hathaway. Like, I used to sit down and watch her. Well, her father alone, I would, like, sit down and study Tiny Hathaway all day. Mm -hmm. Because that's all my mother listened to. But then when I heard her song, her first song, like, Heaven and, um, you know, those a lot of the songs from the earlier days Mm -hmm. when she first came out. I was obsessed with her voice, and I couldn't. I couldn't even tell. I didn't even know that she was his, <laughs> his daughter. Right. But I was obsessed. I was like, I have to work with her. And the fact that I got to work with her was crazy because I didn't even fan out. I waited till I left the studio and then I, you know, <laughs> screamed like a girl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep it all professional when you're in there? Like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Exactly. Like every time she texts me or something, I scream like. I'm like, ah! <laughs> They're like, yo, did you really just scream like a girl? Oh, my God. I was like, I know we're friends, but it's still Layla freaking out the way, yo. Exactly. That is, yeah. like, amazing. So do you feel that winning a Grammy opens another career level? Like, and, you know, when you're playing a video game and then you get that, you know, key or those coins and then you get to this next level. Do you feel like it's like that for you or you feel like there's still I, a lot of work to be done? Like, when it happened, I was happy for, like, an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, my bank account don't really say that. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to get back to grinding. So that's what I did. I think it, you know, made people pay attention. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the music industry ain't like it used to be. Right. So you still got to hustle. Yep. You, know, you still have to get getting kicked in the little doors and get people to pay attention to you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's what it is. So how did you end up on the four? Well, somebody hit me up and it was like, hey, I'm the, you know, the casting director for the, this new show called The Four. I would like for you to, join, you know, like fill out the information and send a couple of videos. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Because, right. you know, you always get somebody in your DM saying something. I did it and I just left it right there. Like, I think the day before Thanksgiving, it was like, can you be in there on Monday? And I was like, what? Monday at what time? Sure. But I still didn't think I was like, OK, this is real, but I don't think I'm going to get it. So I'm going to go just. You know, but for shits and giggles, yeah, I said I'll go. <laughs> right, see what see, so I went there and I was like, okay, let me see. I sung and then they kind of stared at me. But then every time I sung a new song, like I, I kept like I would point out certain people like and, and sing to them. Mm-hmm. And then once I see them smile, I move on to the next person. So that's what I was doing because usually in those type of settings, they will sit there and they stare at you with no emotion. Oh, <laughs> but after a while, they started. One lady, I said, once I cracked her, I knew I. Had it because she was the one who was looking like the deadliest mm-hmm. of all of us. And I sung, I think I sung Run to You, the song I sung on the show. Mm-hmm. I sung that and it melted her. I was like, Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was watching it with my daughter and it was just so good. You were like so confident. I love that confidence that you had on the stage and the way you just like was like, I'm doing this and whatever happens, happens. You know, I just love that energy. It was awesome. Thank you. Well, a little uh, sneak peek was I was knocked out backstage. Really? Like, because we literally was that recording took all day pretty oh. much so it was like i think two o'clock in the morning when we got him oh my goodness <laughs> We was working. So, I mean, when I, when I when I say I was knocked out, I was, like, literally sleeping. Then it was like, you're next. And I jumped up. I'm like, okay, let's figure this out. I was I was scared at first because I was like, I don't know if these falsettos are going to come out now. <laughs> they <laughs> came I out. Them was getting, I, was, I was back there, like, straight snore mode. Oh, my God. I think that the sleeping re-energized you or something or just gave you this like this chill mode where you just went out and just did your thing and you were just calm and collected and just looked like you were in control, you know? So yeah. that not work for me. I think for me, it was like uh, when I stepped, as soon as I touched the stage, mm-hmm. like a calmness came over me. And then the audience yeah. Like once the energy just kind of gave me everything I needed to go out there and do it. So what did you enjoy the most about the experience? I think I enjoyed performing. Okay. 
I hated the video stuff. I hated B-roll. But I enjoyed performing. I enjoyed meeting new friends. I enjoyed the production team. Like, everybody backstage that nobody gets to see. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved every single last one of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, so... I, I enjoyed that, and I enjoyed, you know, of course, the castmates. The majority of them are, like, I'm really close with. And then some don't live here, so, you know, we don't see each other often. But even the people who auditioned, who didn't, you know, who didn't make it, like, I'm close with a lot of them, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I love that you're 37, and you are still willing to chase your dream. I love that, because I'm just like you, you know? And I, and I'm, I'm trying old. to get used to this whole 37 thing. <laughs> I keep telling people I'm 25, though. I'm just saying. Cut it out. Embrace your age. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing because you don't look 37, so, you know, it's Thank all God good. Is. Yeah, you know, <laughs> black don't crack. You can be happy for that. <laughs> Listen, I ain't mad at it one bit. <laughs> I mean, I think that's really awesome. So I have a question. If God came to you right now and said, plan your career, so said, so done, what would you say? I would say, well, Lord, (laughs) I want to definitely, you know, get a Grammy of my own. Mm -hmm. A couple of music awards, uh, Billboard Music Awards, American Music Awards. I want to at least be seven, eight, nine, ten albums deep, you know, and I want to, you know, work with some of the greats. Like Aretha Franklin, I've opened, I, I've opened up for her, but I never like got to go in the studio with her. And uh, you know, and like Stevie Wonder and those kind of people, like Beyonce, I want to work with everybody. So I, I, I want to still give myself as a writer, mm-hmm. but I definitely want to still be an artist and show the world what I can do. I want to go on tours. I want to do everything. Yeah. I think I can. Yes, I think so too. Thank Have you, you ever turned down a project? You know what? I actually have, but it wasn't so so much because of the artist, you know, because, you know, I think me and my writing partner have the ability to make, to pull things out of certain artists, even if they're not like the big, the greatest singer, mm-hmm. we can pull things out, but I'm all about energies. Mm. Like if I, if I work with somebody and their energy is off or they seem like they're shady. Yes. I usually see it before it happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, my discernment is really good. That's a good I, gift. Thank God. You yes. feel me? Like I said, if I ain't getting nothing from church, I got that. Yep. You know, so I can I can feel when something's off. So if I have to, if I don't like the environment or how people move, I kind of just stay away from it and say, and say no, thank you. Yeah, that that's amazing because that was my next question is how do you decide what to do and what not to do in the industry? And, you know, how do you know who to trust? And you just answered that with this question by just saying the energies and you just pay close attention to how people move. Exactly, because I mean... It, I may not talk a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, I smile a lot, but that don't mean I'm not looking. Right. Yeah. I'm always looking. And if something, like, you could be the sweetest. I've seen some of the sweetest people who, like, oh, they look so nice, though. But their energy is off because mm-hmm. it ain't sincere. Mm. <laughs> like, I find those people first for yes. some reason. That's good. That's good. And I'm like, okay, I see what this is. Or there's certain cases when you you know what you're dealing with. And you're like, okay, now the question is, do I want to personally deal with this type of energy Mm -hmm. and play the game? Right. Or not? Yeah. Sometimes you got to make those decisions too. Exactly. So I think moving to LA definitely prepared me for the industry period. And after you hear for a year, that usually determines whether you can stay or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> literally everybody who comes here, like after a year, that's when they know, okay, I can't, I can't live here. I can't handle it. Yeah. You know, for me, it was like that year I learned so much. I came I came to LA with three people. Mm-hmm. A, my writing team was three people. And by the ending of the year, it was just two of us. Somebody had to go. You know what I mean? And th- you like you got to see who people are. You get to, you know, you know, you're you're meeting new people and you're getting people like you're like fresh meat, especially if, if you're talented. They're looking like, Oh my god, you're really good. Like, let's see, let's let's work. So everybody you're working with, you start looking at certain people that that you consider to be your friend and see things start to change. And the crazy thing about it is nine times out of ten, they don't know they changing. <laughs> That must be very interesting to watch. Listen, I was like, this is definitely a shit show, but I'm 
I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. I'm going to see how this plays out. And once you make the decision for me, I don't have to do anything. That's good that you're like that. I'm, I'm yes, happy sir. that you, you know, you have that tough skin and you have that sensibility about you. I refuse to let people drive me crazy. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going crazy, it's going to be because of me. And I think people sometimes, you know, when you're dealing with people who are delusional, mm -hmm. they kind of believe the lies they tell themselves. Yeah. So, like, in, the, in that particular situation, you know, the person that was a part of my circle, he's a really nice person. Mm -hmm. But he does mess up things sometimes and don't know that he does it. Oh, my gosh. So, like, it's almost like. Oxymoron, but uh, right. It is, it is. Well, I'm glad you got rid of the dead weight, honey. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Listen, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so, of writing, producing, singing, and doing vocal coaching, what is your favorite thing to do? I think singing. Okay, it would be between singing. What? Well, it's hard because they all give me something. Mm -hmm. Like singing when I'm on that stage, I I can have fun. It's almost like I'm at church again. Yeah. Because for me, it's like, yeah, I may be singing an R&B song, but when I open my mouth, I want you to feel God. I want you to feel the gift that he's given me. I want you to, to be in tune to that, you know what I mean? To tap into that, you know what I mean? I, it's not just, you know, me doing a whole bunch of fancy stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like a whole bunch of runs and stuff. I want you to feel my, like, do my tone, do the key changes, do the runs or whatever. Like, I want you to feel it. But then when I'm teaching, I'm trying to show the, my students, like, the same thing, like, you don't have to do much to be dope. You know, I'm trying to show them like all about the tone and not about who will sing higher than you, who will sing lower than you. And then I also have to teach them about singers because singers are funny people. Mm -hmm. Like even on the show, I think everybody kept trying. Like they saw the exchange between me and Jason. Yeah. There's a lot that was missing, but, you know, a lot was said. And I I have a problem. Even though now I know who he is, now mm -hmm. I know him as a person. Yeah. Because at that moment, I think it was just, he was on TV and he was just saying whatever he needed to say. Right. But I, I've, I've met him outside of the show and he's pretty cool. Like, me and him is cool now. But I have a problem with singers who forget that their gift is just that, a gift. And at any moment, God could take it away. So you can't walk around here like... You are the be all and end all, like you're the best thing in the world. Because there's a hundred other people inside somebody's church who can sing better than you. Now the question is, can you just? Are you great at what you do? Because mm -hmm. that's that's what's important. It's not about hitting high notes and doing hitting the lowest notes and doing a whole bunch of fast runs. It's are you comfortable in who you are? That you even if you stand next to somebody who can do all that stuff, that you still stand in firm in the dopeness that God giving you. Yes, and that is what I saw when I watched your performance. Performance. That is exactly what you embody, you know? Exactly. Yeah. For me, I was like, everybody's doing a whole bunch of runs. I'm doing the opposite. I'm not doing it. I can do it. Or why would I want to do what everybody else is doing? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? So I'm, I said, listen, I'm going to just give the song what it needs. Especially because it's a Whitney song. I'm like, first of all, I have a personal connection. Freaking love her. Yeah. Like, I'm, I chased her down two blocks. <laughs> 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 like this is serious and i was so mad at some of the tributes that were happening for her because i was like first of all the certain whitney songs you shouldn't touch now this is one song that i was like okay i definitely need to sing this song because yeah. it's telling my story too when you look at me you see someone that, you know you, you don't you don't see what's going on behind you know i mean my eyes you know mm -hmm. what's going on in my life at all because i'm not the kind of person that would walk around telling you oh this 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 is what's going on i'm so depressed i walk around happy mm -hmm. because that's that's the positive vibe i want to give people period so even if something's going on in my life i ain't gonna walk around like it is put your best foot yeah. forward exactly so like that song when the when the producers when the songwriters hit me up who wrote the song I was like yo we need to work with you we really love you did us proud that's when I knew it I was okay I was like I did that I yeah. did that I had to give myself a pat on the back because for me it was like I just wanted to make sure that Whitney would have been proud of my performance I'm sure she was because <laughs> <laughs> I was like yo did I suck <laughs> no I said it felt good mm -mm. but did I suck I don't know <laughs> not at all. I'm sure yeah, she was so. up there in heaven like, yes, I like this. 
better sing. You better sing, brother. Like that's what she did when I sung for her in the street. I was on. I was. She was at Virgin Mega Store. I never forget. She did her album signing there, but I brought my CD the day before mm-hmm. at Fye. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, "Yo!" So the guy was like, "Nah, you can't go down there. You can't get your CD signed unless you buy the CD." I was like, "I ain't got no more money." I just took money to go <laughs> to get on this train. I was like, "Whenever the My Love Is Your Love album came out." I don't remember That's, what year that was. Yeah, but it was a long was, time ago. It was a long time. ago. <laughs> so I literally stood in line. I told the boy I was like, yeah, the, the first person in the line was this boy and his mother, and I was like, listen here, I'm gonna give you this letter, right? And you're gonna give it to Whitney. And I kind of threatened his life, and his mother was like, <laughs> <laughs> chill, we got you. I'm gonna make sure he give her the letter. Like, relax, young man. And she started laughing because she because she saw that I was sincere, but she she was like, yeah, this boy really love her. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. And she was like, you sound like my son. I was like, okay, I get it. Because <laughs> we probably both crazy. With right. The dance. <laughs> so I'm inside the store and I'm singing the song literally at the top of my lungs. I don't know how I know all the words, but I'm singing them. I literally listened to it the night before and I knew every word. So she looks up and I was like, it's me. I saw she's pointing at my <laughs> Because literally everybody's going down the escalator and she's like literally at the end of the escalator like and she looks up and I'm like, it's me. Now I'm having my moment. And then I saw the boy give her the letter. I was like, yes. So I'm going to just stay around and keep, you know, keep singing. Mm-hmm. So I stayed around and once it was time for her to leave, I was like, okay, either she's coming out on that side or she's coming out on this side. So I stood, I went on the side where nobody was. And there was one other person waiting, and this guy. And we stood there, and the, and the van came out, and I literally chased her down <laughs> the street. Oh and when she got to a stoplight, I said, thank God, New York, because I'm too big for all this running. <laughs> so I was like, thank God. So when she, got to, um, when she got to the light, I was like, read the letter. And he started singing, and I was like, shut up. She don't want to hear that, because he didn't sound good. <laughs> and I started singing, I started singing, um, why does it hurt so bad? I don't know how I hit the note because it's high now. Mm-hmm. But I was hit, I hit every note. And she jumped out the car. Her the security, the security, she rolled down the window. She was like, you better sing, brother. And Bobby Brown's sister, I forgot her name. But she was in the car screaming at me. And the security came out and gave me a dap. You know, I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, what do you say I can sing? I lost my, I lost my stuff. Of course. I'm like, I, I kind of spazzed out. I was like, what is that? Ever since then, I was like, nobody can't tell me nothing. What a moment. That's The nice. voice told me I can sing. I know, because she was amazing in her heyday. I mean, woo, yeah. amazing. Whitney Houston. But yeah, so I think that kind of gave me the boost I need to really pursue the whole singing thing. What is the most challenging part of what you do? The challenging part would probably be the business aspect, because not everybody do good business <laughs> you know so sometimes you meet somebody who stand by what they say they're going to do and then you meet people who don't follow through mm. i mean but that's such as life yep so <laughs> you take it with a grain of salt you're like okay well this one didn't work out <laughs> exactly. maybe the next one yeah you know? absolutely what do you sacrifice to do what you love the sacrifice for me is not being around my family because mm-hmm. you know I, I, like my sisters, like we're like close. Like I have two sisters from the same mother, mm-hmm. same father, and we're like really close. Me and my brother we're we're cool, but we're not as close as them. Like we're like we call ourselves the charity. We're the back the black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Even though everybody loves us and we're not really that bad, but they know if they mess with us, we we can get ignorant. Right. So it's on. <laughs> like I'm like if you talk to her crazy, if you talk to me crazy, like we all we have each other's back. We don't do the talking about each other behind the back, you know all that stuff. Stuff that happens in the family, mm-hmm. we don't do it with each other. That's good. So, like, I think being far away from them is the only, you know, down part for me. But the fact that I, you know, like, this being on the show, like, they were very happy for me. I think they were more happy or sad when I left sad than I was. I, I don't think I, I had a sad moment until, like, my nieces and my sister and them would call me and then crying and stuff. I'm like, oh, my mm-hmm. God. Like, y'all really crying? I'm okay. Right. <laughs> I had to literally tell them I FaceTimed so they could see I'm okay. Like, look <laughs> at my face. I'm not crying. I'm not sad. Yeah. It's TV, guys. <laughs> exactly. So now with the show, um, are you going to go back and make an appearance or do you know how what's going to happen? Well, we did the finale. So mm-hmm. that, that already happened. It's it's done. I 
Evie won the show. Uh, we came back for the finale. We were supposed to do like an opening number, but I, I guess we didn't really have time to do everything. Mm hmm. But, it, I mean, we got together for the finale party. And there's supposed to be talks of a tour coming. So, you never know. Everybody needs to stay tuned. That that yeah. might be crazy. Yeah, that would be good. Because they did that with American Idol, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so, if we get to do that, that'd be fun. Because I, even I, I get to see the majority of my friends. Because a lot of them live here. Mm-hmm. It'd be fun to get on the stage and have fun with each other again. Absolutely. What is the biggest lesson you have learned to date while chasing your dreams? Something that stays with you every day and keeps you grounded? Just two things. To know that I can be confident, humble, and not be cocky. I can know that I'm great at what I do and not be an asshole about it. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? So that's for me is the biggest thing. And also knowing that this business is just that a business. I can't really take a lot too personal. And if I walk into it hella emotional, I'm going to drive myself crazy. So I always walk into something like, "Eh, let's see what happens. Yeah, that is really (laughs) That's That's my mindset. No, that's really, really good that you have that mindset. One, please don't change. Please remain humble. (laughs) And don't be an asshole. My family won't even even allow that to happen. Yeah. And yeah, it's a business and shit happens. Some things work out and some things don't. Just keep keep it pushing, you know? Exactly. Like you can't. Cry for spilled milk. Right. Yeah. It's still down. Either you're going to pick, get a piece of tissue and clean it up or sit there in it. I love that. When you walk off of a stage after a performance, what do you want the audience to say about you? I want them to feel something. I want them to say, he has something. Whatever that something is, <laughs> you know, I want you to feel. Like, if it made you remember something, a relationship, or made you tear up or something, like it made you want to dance, whatever it is, I want you to say that. Whenever he opened his mouth to say, I I felt him. I'm sure they will, because I will. I did. My daughter was in here like, oh, my God, I want him to win. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody was like, yeah, you're going to win the show. I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. She surely uh, did. I don't know if I necessarily want to, but yeah. everybody, everybody was like, you you going to win. you going to win. I was like, guys, this is TV. Keep rem- I want y'all to remember that. I'm preparing you. Right. But just in case something don't happen, y'all are like, y'all be okay. I know. So, and it's so weird because sometimes things don't go the way you want them to go, but then something bigger comes out of it. I mean, look at um, Jennifer Hudson. Exactly. She, you know what I'm saying? So you just, I don't know. You Life is just so amazing and interesting and just i don't know i just love waking up every day and seeing what's in store you know exactly because listen the blessing is you woke up exactly (laughs) absolutely so it's like yeah you don't have, you're not waking up in a mansion you ain't you ain't got a rolls royce and in, in, you know in, in the parking lot i'll be mean, in the driveway but you still here yeah to get to to achieve exactly what you want you want that mansion go ahead and wake up every day and fight like you want it exactly so that's that's my goal is like every time i wake up I, of course because I do music, sometimes I don't get no sleep because <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm in the studio all night. But then I have to wake up and like, okay, I need to, to do X, Y, Z. And, you know, and I was just on TV, so I need to ca- capitalize off of that, you know, so people can s- continuously hear me and see me and, feel, and touch me, like out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So now you have to share an oh, hell no moment with us. Um because you are on the Oh Hell No podcast. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a positive moment. It could be a negative moment. But it just has to be a moment. Hmm. Oh, hell no moment. That's great. I don't know. <laughs> something I'm in thinking, the studio. You didn't have a moment where somebody came in and was supposed to sing and sing something or something. Or you wrote something and they didn't like it or something where you were like oh hell no Mm-mm, no you know what <laughs> <laughs> there's an artist that i work with i'm not i'm not gonna say their name no please don't we we did some work and uh I'm, after a while the person like started feeling themselves mm-hmm. and was acting like i didn't do what i like they they basically tried to like debone me mm. like from friday debo the situation right. yes and I was like, oh, hell no. That's not <laughs> happening. I'm pulling the plug. I'm taking my soul back. Da, 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 da. And then I thought about it. I was like, nah, don't do it. You know, I had to, I had to say to myself, at the end of the day, it's a, 
as a business, and this particular person had more clout than me at the time. So it's like, do you want to walk away with bad blood, or do you want? You know, that's the moment when you have to figure out whether you want to be an asshole or not. Right. Yeah. And that moment, I was like, you know what? Because of how things played out, I'm gonna let it ride. Good for you. <laughs> so I let it ride. I was like, you have that one. It'll never happen again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that one. You know what I mean? So that was oh, oh hell moment. Oh hell no moment. And then the the the, the real one was when Jason tried me on show. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> so that was yeah. like a, that was a little real when you guys were going Listen, back at it. <laughs> like it was we, it was two minutes of stuff. I was like, there's a lot that's missing. I he, he said something about uh, my weight or something. What? Like, I forgot what it was. Because they was like, eat, eat, eat. And I was like, he was like, I, I, I'll stay hungry or something. I was like, dude, look like I missed the meal. And he said, you need to. And when he said that, I turned green, like almost like the Hulk. Mm-mm. And I said, hold on. I said, listen, that's why the next thing you heard me say was like, I'm from Brooklyn. We don't do that talking stuff. This is a singing <laughs> competition, my guy. Sing. <laughs> he is. He tried it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, did he really just get me? So, you know, I had, I had to get a little ignorant. Just now. Wow. I was like, I, I hope America still likes me. Oh, please. They I love said, that. Because I was like, listen, I was like, I don't do that. I don't do that cocky stuff. I don't like that. Mm-mm. Yeah, he was so, extremely cocky. but Yeah, but I once you, I guess once people get to know who he is and meet him. Yeah. Yeah, but like, okay, he's not he's not really that bad. Okay, Jason, tone it down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, I, listen, I always try and show love to people. Yeah. Because that's what it's all about. It now, is. Now, if you're an idiot, you're an idiot. I'm definitely going to let it be known. But, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? After actually getting to meet him, mm-hmm. I talk to him, and I was like, all right, cool. He not bad. He not so bad. Well, thank you for showing love to me and the Oh Hell No podcast. I truly enjoyed our conversation and I thank really you for having me. Yes, and I wish you all the things that your heart desires. I wish that they all come true and better. Okay. I wish the same for you. Thank, thank you, you so much. So tell everyone where they can, you know, keep up with you. Are you on social media? Do you have a website? On all my social media, I'm S R So S R S O U L mm-hmm. on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, SoundCloud. You can hear my new song, and on YouTube, you can Google me there. I'm put my name in there, and you will find me. But I, I have a song coming out for Valentine's Day. I already put it out on SoundCloud, but I have the video dropping tomorrow. Oh. So. Nice. I want everybody to go check it out. It's on YouTube. It's called I Love You, I Love You. Nice. Produced by the makers. It's really dope. Oh, I like that. I'm going to go listen to it. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I will. Thank you so much, Saeed. Thank you.